This is the incredible collection of American style farm windmills here at the Mid America Windmill Museum in Indiana. I'm Darren, and this is the Industrial Revolution. So, believe it or not, although you'd look at these and not think Industrial Revolution at first, the Industrial Revolution really sparked the creation of these windmills, and there's a lot more of them out there than you'd think. Built of fairly inexpensive steel skeletons, these windmills were easy to ship, easy to assemble, low maintenance, and were fairly affordable. Even today, you can pick up a basic American-style farm windmill for just a few thousand dollars. Lots of companies were making different designs with new innovations being introduced regularly. The museum here has more than 50 different designs with different features and different combinations of features. You may have noticed that this is the only windmill turning out here today. You might also notice that it's the only one with that big box hanging off the back at the top. That's one of those innovative features, and we'll come back to it. These windmills quickly grew in popularity, being installed everywhere from farmyards to remote livestock grazing land and everything in between. By pumping water into a tank whenever the wind blew, you didn't need constant wind to provide a constant water supply. At their peak, there were millions of these windmills in use across the U.S. While it's easy to assume that everything's been moved over to electric, that's not the case, as anyone who's driven through the western plains of the U.S. can tell you. In fact, it's estimated that there's still around 60,000 of these windmills still out there pumping water today. So how do these windmills actually pump water? It's actually pretty simple. The spinning windmill connects to a shaft, and that shaft, via a crank mechanism, converts the rotating windmill blades to a reciprocating up and down movement for the water pump. It's essentially the same crank mechanism that you have on steam locomotives and large stationary steam engines, only in those it's converting the back and forth motion of the piston into a rotational motion. On the windmills, it just does it the other way around. It converts the rotational motion of the windmill blades through that crank into an up and down motion to pump water. So they have a great collection of windmills outdoors here at the museum. But what they have indoors is really what makes you understand what you're looking at outdoors. The real challenges that they face with, with windmills, and that's any windmill, including the giant wind turbines you see today, is that you have to actually vary them. You have to face into the wind or they're useless. Uh, on top of that, uh, if the wind gets too strong, you have to do something to take your windmill effectively out of the wind or you just destroy the equipment. And they, they came up with a couple of really ingenious ways to do it with uh, the American style farm windmills here that you know, the big windmills didn't really get. Today it's all done electronically, of course, and there's electric motors that handle the rotating and feathering blades. But let's take a look at how they developed the process here. If you notice, a lot of these windmills actually have not only the main, the main windmill blades on them, the, the big circular area that catches the wind, but they also have often not one, but two veins sticking out the back. Now in this case, this one has two, one really big one out the back and one little one out the side. Now why would you do that? That makes no sense. Until you realize that the big one out the back, that one's going to force this to turn. That big vein out the back is going to trail downwind and keep the windmill facing into the wind. Well, what happens if the wind gets too strong? Well, that's what the little one here is for. This little vein that we have here, you see, connects around behind here to a mechanism and back. And let's say that it starts pushing really hard on that vein. So 
to, that actually trips this lever over here, pulls up on that cable, defeats the weight there, and it turns the windmill out of the wind. To see that again, you know what to expect. If you look at that, you have the green, green bar coming across here. It gets pushed back. The lever causes it to lift up, and that turns the windmill. So now, although your windmill's not turning anymore, it's also not tearing it apart. There's another way to do that. That's exemplified by this type of windmill. So if we look at this windmill, and you see that the first one we looked at has sort of a continuous uh, span of, of blades around this one. It's actually in several pieces, in several different segments. Uh, what happens if the wind gets too strong for this one? They actually just fold out of the way. So they'll push themselves out of the way with the wind. And of course, as the wind dies down, they go back into place and start working again. Go ahead and take another look at this mechanism in place here. And again, that's completely automatic. In the first windmills, you'd have to go out and actually apply a brake on these ones. They just run. A lot of ingenuity in these windmills that people just don't think about. It's so another innovation that made it possible for these to work so well in remote areas is the self-oiling windmill. Before these, you had to actually climb up and grease or oil everything about once a year or so, give or take. Uh, but with this, and this is all the windmills that have the uh, little housing on top of them have this, it actually lubricates itself by sitting in a, a pool of oil here. And the whole system lubricates itself. And now you may not have to touch them more than once every five or 10 years. And that's critical if you're putting these out in remote areas. So these windmills were developed in the mid 1800s, right at the peak of the Industrial Revolution, as a direct result of the Industrial Revolution. As more and more people moved to the cities, as fewer farmers had to feed more people, the need for ready water supplies to grow, uh, to raise larger herds of cattle, grow more crops, only increased. It's just still increasing today. And the windmills like this are what allowed that, what allowed us to actually advance in the Industrial Revolution the way we did. And that's why these windmills are the Industrial Revolution. Before you go, I do need your help. There's two things you can do. Number one is help YouTube get more people to the channel. Easiest way you can do that, completely free. Hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel. And best of all, you can comment more than just two or three words. That tells YouTube, you know, this video is good, the channel's good, send more people here. Second thing you can do, each of these videos ends up being pretty expensive to actually produce. Obviously, it's hours of work for each one, but I also have to actually drive to the locations. And if it's far enough away, I have to spend a night in order to do all the on-location filming that I do for these videos. That I think is essential for the videos. If you can help out financially, either with the super thanks, or if you can help out over at patreon.com slash industrial revolution, uh, that'll help me to extend my range even further, get out to more and better sites, and bring you even better videos. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time.